welcome to Kyrgyzstan. Over the next few days, we're gonna dive deep into the nomadic Kyrgyz lifestyle. We'll experience yurt living, mastering the ancient art of eagle hunting, and participating in some of the wildest traditions. So we're gonna start here, one of the most breathtaking places in Kyrgyzstan, right on the Sonko Lake, where nomadic families migrate here during the summer months with their families, their herds, and their traditions. Here they come and they build an entire village out of nothing. So today we're gonna be like real nomads. We're gonna build ourselves a house. We're gonna take this and make it look something like this. So they said it takes about one hour, two hours to build this tent. I don't know how they do it because when I get a tent, any tent, to build it takes me more than an hour to just put it together for one person. <laughs> but when you have the help of real Kyrgyz nomads, the ears can be built in record time. In less than 20 minutes, the base is ready. The yurts are more than just tents for the nomads. They are the way of life. They are extremely practical, resilient, and are even reflected on the country's flag. So it's becoming extremely windy, so we can't actually finish the year. We can't put the sides on it. So we actually have to take it down. But the good news, they're gonna allow us to stay in another yurt that they already finished. So let's go check it out. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It's quite simple. They put a few beds in here for people to sleep. There's also an oven, you can heat it up. You can see this is the base that we built together with the lines. And what they do next is they put this wool to keep it warm. And I can tell you right away, it was so freezing outside. But with this on, it keeps the heat quite well. And it's quite comfortable in here. And this is the dining area, but we have no food. So our first task is to get some food. Come on, go back. <laughs> Uh, so where do you get some supplies like uh, food, grocery stores? We didn't see anything around here. Uh, we have a lot of magazines. 100 kilometers, probably. But since we don't have the time to drive hours to the nearest grocery store, we come up with a different plan. To make our own food, much like the nomads do. We're about to make is a traditional Kyrgyzstan drink called kumis and it's made from fermented horse milk. So the first thing we gotta do is gotta milk the horses. Take a look. It smells so fresh. <laughs> We're gonna drink this. <laughs> Never had horse milk. So this is kumis, it goes inside here in the milk and then you close it and you do this at least minimum 5,000 times. The more you do it, the better it's gonna be. And here's the final product after thousands and thousands of times. You did 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> they did it 50,000 times. It smells sour, like a um, fermented drink. Mm, very sour, but like a very fresh, light yogurt with champagne in it. So historically this drink is cherished as an elixir for the nomadics to keep them strong. There's lots of vitamins, it's delicious, it's very healthy. So it's a definitely must try if you're ever in Kyrgyzstan. So they do also have cows here, but with cow milk they make this cheese and this is the final product. So they have cheese, they have kumis, you kind of have everything here. You can survive. Ooh, it's very good. For countless generations, horses have been gracefully woven into the fabric of Kyrgyz nomad culture. Horses not only serve as a source of food through their milk, but are the primary modes of transportation and help with herding other livestock, but also are absolutely crucial for nomads' entertainment. Before we can start, they need to prepare the game ball. This game is called Kok Boru. Imagine polo, but instead of politely chasing a ball around, players on horsebacks are fighting over a goat carcass. It's as if traditional polo looked in the mirror one day, felt a midlife crisis coming on, and said, hmm, I need more excitement. 
So, he ditched the ball, grabbed the headless goat, and turned the intensity up to 11. Welcome to the wild side of Kyrgyzstan. This was the craziest game. It's like rugby without any rules on horseback. There's only one thing, they can't hit each other on the head and they can't choke each other. This is the most intense thing I've ever seen. And this is their traditions. It still lives with them and they still do this all the time. It's crazy to think about it. You know, it's so absolutely beautiful here. The animals just roaming around, the dogs just relaxing in the sun. It's so peaceful and calm, but I don't want to romanticize this place too much. The nearest store is 100 kilometers, that's two hours away. The shower, they said, hasn't worked for quite a while, so they use a bucket of water to clean up and it's so freezing outside. But yet, in these harsh conditions, they're still so kind-hearted, they're still smiling, and they're really happy here. Okay, so I think we experienced this very remote nomadic lifestyle to the maximum, but we still want to see more of Kyrgyzstan. So we're gonna to head to the next lake, which is the most famous one in Kyrgyzstan, called Isik Lake, where we're gonna meet another type of nomad. Meet Nul Sultan, who is one of the last eagle hunters here in Kyrgyzstan. Is there a lot of eagle hunters in Kyrgyzstan? No, 50 eagle hunters. 50 total? Yes, wow. Only 50. Two Some girls eagle hunters. My grandfather eagle man, uh, third generation grandfather, grandfather eagle man. Uh -huh. uh, family eagle hunters. Only hunting female eagles. Female eagles big, strong, very smart. Male eagle little uh, lazy. <laughs> eagle meat, only meat. Uh, taking only skin. Mm -hmm. uh, skin uh, tradition ahead. Fox skin. Fox skin. Yeah. <sighs> So how the process of uh, training the eagles goes is one of the guys goes up the mountain with the eagle. Uh, the other guy that stands here, he has a little bit of raw meat, pigeon or something else. And uh, he releases the eagle, he spins around and he sees the meat and he comes to grab it uh, and he eats the meat. Happy eagle. The second process is um, when the eagle is older, they tra train it with a skin. The skin, jackal skin. Jackal skin. And they go the same, the guy goes up, but the other guy here, he has the meat, uh, the skin, and he runs uh, from the eagle, and the eagle has to catch it. And when the eagle catches it, it catches it right on the head. Like right on the head. <laughs> you see it? Kill shot. Can't escape. Now, now he gets a little reward. This is his motivation every time to get them to keep hunting. Yeah, a little bit of fresh meat luck. <laughs> One time a champion of World One Nomad Games. Oh wow, so <laughs> we're in the presence of a champion, world yeah. champion, yeah, an world eagle world. hunter, yeah. and the eagle. <laughs> yes, it's the cleaning. Is it a rock? Yeah, eagle napkin. <laughs> <laughs> so eagle hunting was a way of life for the nomadic tribes. They would hunt for, not only for food, but also for fur, and in the harsh environments, they could make hats like this to keep themselves warm, uh, provide food for their families. So I think it's a very fascinating culture and it's very amazing to see that it still thrives here to this day and they still go hunting every day in the winter and in the summer. A trip to Kyrgyzstan will forever change you. There's nowhere else you can experience these type of traditions that have stood the test of time. Meet the most genuine people, make forever friends, and be easily captivated by nature's sheer beauty. As we depart, we leave not as outsiders, but as part of his rich tapestry, forever changed and forever grateful. You know, 24 hours ago, we were sitting in one of the most modern towns in the world. And today, I find myself here sitting with nomads in the middle of nowhere, about to sleep in the yurt, the way that the Mongols slept 2,000 years ago. is unbelievable. <laughs>